Okay, what am I saying? What am I doing? Hey. For the three weeks I was at my brother's house, I decided to make my life just a bit harder and tackle a whole different makeover. But all the extra stress was definitely worth it because this was a very special makeover for some of my favorite people. And of course, I was trying to reclaim my title for Aunt of the year. Okay, you little goobers, you ready to go see your new room? Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. If you saw my last video, you guys know that I am in Washington, D.C. helping my brother gut and renovate his kitchen. Well, this week we're gonna take a bit of a pause on the kitchen renovation because while I'm here, I talked my brother and my sister-in-law into letting me do a fun kids' bedroom makeover. And because my brother lives in a city, he has a classic city row house. And most row houses come with three bedrooms and my brother has four kids so that means that three kids share this one bedroom so this is going to be a fun challenging makeover to make sure that this room is as functional as possible but also make it so that each kid feels like they're represented through the design and I don't know if you can tell by the very echoey sound in here but this room is already cleared out because we had to clear it out so that the floors could get sanded and restained so all I have to do is take down the shelves behind me and I can get started painting. So to get this makeover done in time and also have time for all of the projects that I had in the kitchen, a lot of multitasking had to happen. And I'm pretty sure this is the most stretched I have ever been juggling all of these projects. So it was a lot of back and forth, jumping between the two spaces, working on a project in the kitchen, and then running upstairs to work on a project in the kids' room. And if I could work on a project for the kids' room down in the kitchen, I definitely did that because then it made it easier to jump back and forth between two projects. So when I sat down to design out this space, I had a lot to consider. One, I wanted to make this room as functional as possible. With three kids sharing one room, functionality was key. I also wanted to make this a really cool space. It's a city house and the rest of the house was getting this really cool makeover. So I wanted this room to play off some of the other design elements that were happening throughout the house. And the biggest, most important thing that I had to consider was everything I chose to do had to make a big impact but not take a lot of time. So I basically broke this makeover down into a bunch of bite-sized little projects that I sprinkled throughout all of my other kitchen projects. And my niece and two nephews share this room. So this design couldn't be too girly, but it also couldn't be too boyish. It had to be a blending right down the middle. And also they're not like little, little kids. They're seven, five, and three. So I wanted them to be able to grow up in this space so that in a few years they still still think this room is cool. And because this room really isn't that big, I wanted to make sure it felt as big as it possibly could. So what do we do when we wanna make a room feel as big as possible? We either keep or paint the walls white. But of course, I always like to do a little something something. So I picked out two walls that worked out with the design and the layout and I painted them black. Well, I only painted half of the wall black and adding this little half L shape of black did so much to the room. One, it definitely added dimension. And also I think that it made the ceilings feel higher up because the black really grounded out the space, whereas the white above that really pulled your eye up. And also because I was planning on putting a lot of colorful things in the room, it's a kid's room, I wanted to make it feel colorful. I also thought that if I kept the walls all white, two things might happen. One, I think it would feel a little too like little kiddish so that in a few years they would definitely have outgrown the space. So I think the black kind of aged the room. And two, I think if the room was all white with all these colorful elements, it would also feel a little too girly. And one of the main colorful elements I was putting in the room was three dressers that were each a different color. So I thought these dressers would pop off of the black in a much cooler way that fit the vibe I was going for versus if I just kept the walls white. Yay! Okay, so I have another coat of paint that I'm gonna have to do on these two black 
it already does, but I have to let that sit for a while. So I'm gonna get started painting the three dressers I got. The kids definitely need storage for their clothes, but I also didn't wanna take up a bunch of room with like a really large dresser. So I went to Ikea and got three of the Rast dresser. It's a small, cute little three drawer dresser, and I'm gonna paint each one a different color. So it's gonna bring a fun, colorful element into the room, but because it's small, it'll be perfect for kids, but not take up a bunch of room. Okay, uh Guys, these two projects working on them simultaneously right now is kicking my butt. I am very sleepy today. Ugh. Okay, so I thought I was gonna get to at least starting to paint the dressers yesterday. That did not happen. My brother got home from work. He helped me finish up the painting. There's a few areas I have to touch up on the walls, but all I did was get the dressers together and then I stopped, went downstairs, and started on the lovely project that is the kitchen renovation, which you guys will see in part two. So now that the dressers are together, I'm gonna get started painting. So I talked about this a little bit in part one of the kitchen renovation, but about a month or so before we got started on the kitchen renovation, I drove to my brother's house to help him and my sister-in-law kind of plan out some final details in their kitchen design. And that is when I saw my niece and nephew's room and instantly wanted to do a bedroom makeover. And one of the things I saw that my niece and nephews needed was some storage. Originally, they were all three sharing the one closet in the room and that was just not enough space so I knew I needed to come up with a solution for their clothes and I thought if I got just one large dresser that would lead to a few issues one two kids might have to share one drawer so it's not really making this easy to organize and at the same time a large dresser would be pretty bulky and take up a lot of room and something my sister-in-law was hoping to get out of this makeover was enough space in the room that the kids could play in there they have have a playroom down in their basement but she was hoping to have a secondary place where they could play that was not the living room on the main level so when i saw these cute little dressers at ikea i knew they would be perfect if each kid had their own and with these dressers being untreated pine these were super easy to paint ikea even advertises them as a piece of furniture that should be painted or that they encourage you to paint and with each dresser being a different color each kid would know exactly which dresser would was theirs so this would lead to no confusion when it came to organizing their things and this also gave me the opportunity to get a few things to display on each dresser that uniquely represents each kid and some of the things they like and after two coats of paint I finished up these dressers with a top coat of polycrylic and adding these leather handles I got on Amazon so now comes the fun project and I think the project that changed this room the most and also made this room I think as functional as it possibly could have been. So as you know there are three kids sharing this one room so that means there has to be three beds in the room. And with this being a small space and wanting to leave as much room as we possibly could so that the kids could still play in the room there was only one logical solution. Triple bunk bed. Now here's the thing, it'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. So of course, this was the least bite-sized little project that I did for this room. So my brother and I tackled the first part of this build together. One, so that it would go faster. And two, there are parts of this project that two people are definitely needed. And also one of those people had to be a lot stronger than I am. And this thing had to be very well built because there were gonna be kids climbing all over it. So it also made me feel better having my brother there and having his eyes on this project. So if he felt comfortable having his kids climb all over this bed, I felt comfortable having his kids climb all over this bed. Also, I have footage he was there, so if something happens, nobody can blame me. Ah! 
I started outside cutting down a bunch of two by sixes down to size. And the two by sixes are what we use to build the frames that the mattress sits in. And then taking two two by fours, I ripped those in half and then cut those down to size. These are the pieces we attach to the inside of two of the frames so that we could add slatted boards on top and actually hold the mattress up. And once I had all of this cut down, I moved inside and started putting these frames together using pocket holes. And the bunk bed that my brother and I had designed out wasn't your typical triple bunk bed where it's just three bunks stacked on top of each other. Personally, if I had to sleep on something like that, I would feel pretty claustrophobic and I didn't want this bunk bed to have that feeling. So the bunk bed we had designed out was more of a zigzag pattern and this was going to give the kid on the bottom and middle bunk more space above their head. And once these three frames were built, it was time to start start lifting and setting the middle and top bunk. So I went outside and I cut down five two by fours to seven feet. Originally, my brother and I weren't sure exactly how tall we wanted to make this bunk bed. So by cutting these down to seven feet, we could kind of figure out how tall we wanted it to be while we were putting this whole thing together. So we started off by attaching one two by four to the corner of the frame that was going to stay on the ground. And we used a whole bunch of three inch long screws. And then at every corner, we also made sure to use at least one five inch long self tapping screw. And then taking that fifth two by four, we attach that to the front left hand side of this frame that was staying on the ground. And not only was this going to add more support for the middle and top bunk, but these two front left hand pieces were going to be the ladder to the bunk bed. So we pushed the bottom frame up into the corner where it was going to stay. And then taking a second frame, we placed that on top and then pushed it over so that it was touching the other wall so that we could start creating this zigzag pattern. We then quickly determined how high off the ground we wanted this middle bunk to be, marked it out, and this is the part of the build two people were definitely helpful. So my brother lifted the frame up to where we wanted it to be and also watched the level at the same time so that we were making sure this frame was staying level and I quickly screwed this in place. And at first I added just one screw to each two by four to just get this frame in place and level. And then I went back in and added more support with more screws. And then we basically repeated the process. The top bunk was going directly over the bottom bunk. So we set that in place. And of course my brother then had to lift it up closer to his head, hold it in place, make sure it was level while I quickly screwed it in place. So with the frames all together and them set in place, my brother then just left me to work on this project by myself. And if you're a little squeamish, I might jump ahead like 30 seconds, maybe a minute. So bad, there's blood everywhere. The bunk beds were a terrible idea. Why did you let us do that? So my brother left me alone because he had to go to the doctor. We were working on a project for the kitchen and he went outside to rip down a two by four. And without going into too much detail, let's just say the day ended with six stitches and a broken finger. So this is a cautionary tale. Please be careful when you are using saws, especially table saws. Wear ear pro, wear eye pro, wear gloves. Take your time so that you don't hurt yourself and leave your sister to make all of these projects by herself. Isn't that right, Bonnie? So now back to building this bed. So the middle and top bunk definitely needed more support. So I started out taking a whole bunch of measurements, taking those measurements outside and cutting a whole bunch of two by fours down to size. So my brother got home just in time to help finish up this bed. We added some last two by four support pieces. And then we also anchored the top bunk to the wall. And once this thing was anchored, this thing was not going anywhere. And my brother and I felt very confident that his kids could climb all over this thing and it wasn't going anywhere. Amazing, look at that. That looks like what you would buy from a store. 
And the last thing that I did to finish up this first day of building this bunk bed was add the slatted boards on the middle and top bunk. Originally, we were going to just cut down a whole bunch of two by fours and set those in place to hold the mattress up. But on one of the many trips my brother and I had to make to Ikea, he saw these slatted boards that Ikea sells for their beds. So we ended up getting one pack that is meant for a king size bed. And that ended up being all we needed for the middle and top bunk. Ow. Okay, so today is hopefully the last day I'm working on this room because it kind of has to be because I only have three and a half days to get this room done and all my projects that I have in the kitchen. So I'm going to start off by giving this bunk bed a really good sanding. Yes, I probably should have just sanded all the boards before I put anything together, but I was trying to make the most of my time with my brother because building these bunk beds without him would have been like near to impossible or it would have just had to be like very creative with how I built it and then after I sand it I'm going to paint all of the components of the ladder and get that together and then I've got a wall to touch up and then I'm gonna get to all of the fun projects that I still have planned for my niece and nephews Spoiler alert, I did not finish the bedroom on this day. I did try my hardest. I worked really long hours, but there was just too much to do. And honestly, these two days were a blur. I was basically in a project tornado and I just worked and worked and worked on this room in the kitchen until everything was done. <laughs> And I'm honestly not even sure what order I kind of did things in. So I'm just going to take this one section of the room at a time. So if you see me jumping back and forth between two different outfits, that's why. I did want to leave most of the bed this natural wood because that was playing into the design and color scheme that was happening throughout the house. And I did want this bed to have a bit of an industrial touch. And I also wanted the ladder to stand out from the rest of the bed. So after sanding everything down, I taped off the wood and I only painted the pieces that make up the ladder and I just used some of that leftover black paint from the wall. And my brother just had these one inch thick oak dowels laying around that I used for the ladder steps. So I wanted to add a cozy personal touch to each bunk. So I started off by getting these three wall sconces and adding a light to each bunk. My brother was kind of against this idea because he thought his kids were going to continue to play with the lights when they're supposed to be sleeping so I told him I would come up with a solution so what I did was get a pack of these LED puck lights and using some command tape I stuck these up into the sconces and these are remote operated so at the end of the day when the kids are supposed to be sleeping my brother can take the remote and they can't turn on and off the lights so by the time that I got the lights up and a few more things up on the wall in the room the ladder components were dry so using some one inch pipe straps I used those to attach the dowels to the ladder posts. And I really love the way this ladder turned out. It gave this bed a really cool industrial look. And then the next day, or at least I'm assuming it's the next day because my clothes are different, I sealed up this bed, the unpainted and the painted areas using some polycrylic. And then I got to work finishing up adding a few more cozy and personal touches to each bunk bed. Okay, now let's go back a day to work on the wall above the dressers. So something my sister-in-law really wanted was a fun gallery wall incorporated into the room. And something I wanted to be a part of this gallery wall was having the kids be able to add their artwork whenever they wanted to. Especially my niece who is always painting and drawing and sewing and is basically a mini Miley. 
She's definitely a future DIYer. So taking a one by four, I cut that down to size and screwed it in place just above the line where the black stopped. And then I got a pack of these black clips that I screwed in place evenly across the whole board. So this was a very quick and easy project and the perfect place for my niece and nephews to display their artwork or whatever they want above their dressers. And in every inspo pick I saw for kids rooms, there was two things I saw in every single picture. So I decided to make both of them. And the first thing I saw in every kids room photo was a pennant on the wall. So to make this pennant, what I did was measured and marked out the shape and then cut that out. And using my iPad, I figured out what I wanted the pennant to actually say and helped me visualize how to make and cut out the letters. And once I landed on what I wanted the pennant to say, I took the shape that I had cut out already and laid that over the black felt and cut out the same shape so that I knew that the letters that I was making would fit on the shape. So of course, I just freehand drew out these letters and cut them out so by no means were they perfect so maybe if you have like a cricket or something like that you could use that and get like more crisp letters but at the same time I also like that the letters are perfect and it looks handmade because I think it fits the vibe of a kid's room. Some of the pennants I saw online that were perfect and clearly done by a machine had kind of a preppier look to them and looked like they should maybe go in like a college dorm room and not a kid's room. And there was just one final project that I really wanted to do to finish off this room. Did I have time for it? No, no, not really, but I was determined to get it done. <laughs> So in every kids room inspo pic that I saw, every single room had a velvet letter pillow. And when I saw this, I just thought they were the cutest thing. I wanted to get a letter pillow for each kid to put on their bunk. And originally, because of the timing and everything, I was just gonna buy one. And some of these pillows are like $60 plus shipping. So with three pillows, I was looking at close to like 200 or over $200 for these three pillows. So that's when I determined we gotta make them. We, got, we gotta make them. And like everything in the room, I started this project on one day and finished it on the second day. And originally I didn't have any paper or anything I could use for a pattern. So I just freehand drew a J. That is a tongue twister. Freehand drew a J. And then on the second day, <laughs> There's a lot of tongue twisters. And then on the second day, I did get some cardboard paper that I used as a pattern for an I pillow and a Z pillow. And although my niece's pillow did turn out okay, the pattern for my nephew's pillows definitely helped and made the pillows turn out a lot cleaner and nicer. So eventually when I have the time, I'm probably going to make a new pillow for my niece. And she's gonna wonder why she's getting the exact same pillow. And I'm gonna tell her because your aunt can do better so your aunt did do better yeah so i started out cutting two of each letter and for the z and the j i made sure to flip over the pattern so that i got the mirror side of the letter and for the i of course i didn't need to do that because they were both exactly the same and then for each letter i cut out a bunch of four inch wide long strips these were the pieces that i used as the wall of the pillow to connect the two letters and this is the part that is really important to do so that you don't get a wonky and twisted letter pillow. I really took my time and I pinned out this four inch long piece along the edge of each letter. And at every corner, I made sure to mark out with a straight edge the corner. This made it so that when I went to attach the second letter, I knew exactly where the corners needed to meet up. And the only place I could sew in my brother's house at the time was at the new kitchen island. So pretend like you don't see anything in the kitchen, even though I'm pretty sure I got really close-up shots so that you couldn't see anything in the background. 
And something I would recommend if you are a newer sewer and you want to try to make one of these letter pillows is use a fabric that is not velvety or slippery like I used. If you used a cotton fabric or a jersey knit or something like that, it's not going to slip and slide all over the place and it's going to be a lot easier to work with. Or if you want to make this even easier, you could just cut out two letters and sew those together instead of adding the little wall to give this more of a 3D look. And once all the pillows were sewn up, I of course left a little hole in each pillow so that I could fill them with fluff. And I never get the poly filler that you can find at like pretty much any craft store. That stuff's always really expensive. What I do is I go to like either Walmart or Target, get the cheapest pillow there, and I cut that open and use the fluff that is inside those pillows. So the two pillows that I got to fill up the three letter pillows were $6 each, and that brought the grand total to making all three pillows to $30. And I am so glad I took the time to make these pillows because I am obsessed with how they turned out. Except that J, I can do better. <laughs> Okay guys, today is a big day. I have two surprise reveals to do. I'm gonna be doing the one in the kitchen downstairs and then coming up here and of course doing the one for my niece and nephews. But I need to spend a few hours getting this room together. I finally have all of the pictures and the pillows and the bedding and everything finally came in. So I am ready to set this room and get it ready for them. Okay, you little goobers, you ready to go see your new room? Yeah. Are you ready? No. Okay, guys. Go on. Oh, oh, we roll. Roll. Look at our bed. love those little goobers and if that didn't warm your heart I don't know what does. I am so happy with how this room turned out and for being a fairly quick little makeover I think this is my favorite project I have done thus far. It's exactly what I was picturing in my head. It's fun, it's colorful, it's functional and it also has this cool city kids room vibe. This bunk bed was a serious game changer for this room. The kids now actually have space in the room to play. My niece has already started hanging up all of her artwork using those clips and for the most part I think it's also easier for them to keep the room a little bit cleaner and more organized so I know my sister-in-law likes that because I think that's what moms like I'm not sure I'm not a mom so I hope you guys like this video as always thanks so much for watching and I will see you in part two of the kitchen renovation bye guys awesome you like it Oh, good. Kissies. Do you like it? Yeah. You're good.